Okay, so now it's time to fuse the uh, templates that we had traced out onto the fusible web on two pieces of wool. And like I've said before, wool is expensive, so we're going to be really careful as to how we fuse it onto um, the uh, wool. Wool usually has both sides the same, but sometimes um, it's you like to look at both sides of the wool because Maybe one side has a snag in it, or maybe has a discoloration that you don't like, or if it's hand dyed wool, you might find a piece where the hand dyeing on one side is really cool looking and you want that to be on your project. So say this side had a really cool hand dyed design and you wanted this side on your project, then you need to flip the piece of wool over because you're gonna fuse your fusible traced out shape onto the wrong side, the side that you're not going to be using. So you lay the piece down like that and you follow the manufacturer's instructions for the fusible. Mine says to use a hot iron with no steam and I just carefully run the iron down the length a couple of times until I know that the piece is fused to the wall. And you can see that it is. So that's the pot. And as you can see, I put it down here onto the corner of the wall. And all of this up here, I can cut away and put into my scrap uh, bin because you'd be surprised. You, you could have berries in a project or a small flower that would take this piece of wool. And since wool is so expensive, I save every scrap. You can even use it for stems in the future. So only problem with a, a star is that it does kind of waste some wool because there's just no way to lay it on a corner. So you're just gonna have to try to cut out a piece of wool that's not very big, you know, the big, not too much bigger than your, your star. And you do that. And once again, when you cut it out, you cut out these pieces here and those can be put in a scrap bin. So I'll show you how I would do it. I would go like this. And this piece, I could put it in a scrap bin and it could be used as a berry or a center of a flower later on. So now I'm ready to cut out my star. I'm gonna finish by cutting out these chunks so I can save them for future projects. And now, as I covered before, see we have the lines that we drew before and uh, cut outside of on the uh, fusible web to follow and be able to cut out our star. So I will cut carefully on those lines and this is a nice sharp serrated edge scissors that cuts through the paper and the wool. And I just keep going around on all five sides here. So as you can see, since I cut away the usable portions before I cut out my shape, this is the only waste I have. So I'm not wasting a lot of wool. You are gonna waste a little bit, but not a lot. So when we are ready to use this piece, you will be peeling back the paper. I'll just peel it slowly here for a little bit, or just to show you, you can kind of see the shiny part there that is the, the glue from the fusible that is gonna fuse your project to your background. So I'll show you the leaves here. Since they're all the same color, I can cut out a bigger piece of wool and then I try to place them with the least amount of waste. You can see here, 
these, these bigger pieces here can be cut off after I fuse these. So I'm gonna fuse with the iron. And obviously you've gotta make sure that all your drawn lines are on the wool. Now I'm gonna cut away this excess here that can be put into my scrap bin. and be used for something else in the future. So there's not a lot of waste. So when I cut all of these out, there won't be too much waste. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish fusing all the rest of this stuff off camera, and then we will move on to laying out your design. And this is where uh, the fold lines and the drawn lines um, and rulers will come in handy. So uh, we'll be back in a second with that part. Okay, now it's time to lay out your design and then to fuse pieces to the background so you're ready for stitching. The supplies you'll need here, once you've got everything cut out, you can see I've got everything cut out. I got my little, my little pile of scraps here that could go in my scrap bin and here's my trash. Um, you need the pattern so that it has, it usually has the pattern, usually has a diagram of how your uh, piece should look, or you use the picture from the pattern. And I kind of set it up here. That gives me a guide to go by. I've cut out my stems that were required in the pattern, and I'm going to need my glue for the stems. You're gonna need your hot iron here. You need a water bottle filled with water and a clean white towel. I buy a stack of these from the dollar store, so they're not very expensive. And you want white because you don't want to have any color transfer from the towel onto your project, especially if you're using a light background for your project. You wouldn't want um, to be using, say, a red or blue towel and then end up with some color transfer onto your project. So first thing we're gonna do is this is a pattern that has stems, so we need to be able to place the stems where uh, they belong in the pattern. And by looking at the picture, I have found that my stems are kind of close to the center right there. And the raw ends of the three stems in the middle are covered by the pot. So what I do because I'm not ready to fuse that part of the design down yet, but I will use the pot kind of as a guide to where I place my stems. So in this pattern, I want my pot to be here. And I will use a ruler to measure and make sure that my um, pot is even, the bottom. And it's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm taking my ruler and I placed uh, the line of my ruler on the line that I had drawn previously on the background. And so I uh, line up the edge of my pot and, you know, if I'm a real stickler and I wanna make sure it's, you know, perfectly centered, I can go like this and move it a little bit until I like where it is. So then what I will do is the first stem that I'm supposed to use is a three and a half inch stem for the center flower. So I just kind of use the pot there and this, this stem goes right up the center and I'm using my center fold that was already here when I folded it or if you have the lines like I advised you to draw previously. And then I'll take my glue and I just use little dots on the back of the stem and I'm going to Press it down, you press it lightly, move the pot, put a couple of dots of glue there. So now I've got this stem in place and then I have the raw end there so that I know when I fuse the pot in place, it's gonna cover the raw edges. So looking at the picture, I see that I need Two more stems. One is going to go out this way and kind of curve a little bit and one's going to go out this way and kind of curve a little bit. But to get the curve in the stems, the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to put a little dot of glue at the bottom of the stem, get that secure. Same with the other stem. Get that secure. And I'm going to wait about 30 seconds until they're nice and secure. You can kind of put your finger on it and make sure they're nice and secure. And then that way, when I am bending the stem, you know, as it looks in the pattern, it's supposed to have a little curve. I'm not going to be pulling it up from here. And at this point, I'm going to also use the flowers to make sure I don't go over my outside line here for the design. Now, um, I always cut my stems or have people cut the stems in the project longer than needed so that I'm sure that you have enough. And if you don't want the rest of the stem extending underneath the flower, you can place the flower where you want it. And then you can just snip off the excess stem underneath if you want before you end up fusing everything down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish getting all these stems in place and then we'll come back and we'll place everything else on the design and we'll fuse. Okay, so now all my stems are glued down. And as you can see, I also used the pot as a guide because these stems kind of curve around the bottom ones and I did not want um, the stems to be cut off by the spout or the handle of the pot. So I made sure that um, uh, they didn't by having this pot here as a guide. So now when it's time to fuse the rest of the, the uh, items down, you're gonna uh, remove the paper backing. And believe me, this step has been missed a few times and, and I've wondered why things haven't fused. You have to remove this paper backing. And as you can see, there's the shiny side that has the, the sticky stuff for the fusible. And then I once again get my pot lined up by using my ruler, making sure it's straight and making sure it's where I want it. And then I start putting the other items onto my background. Now you can fuse things a few at a time if you want, or you can do like I do and you can lay everything out and fuse it all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything laid out here onto my design. And I follow the picture in the pattern to, and, or the picture on the uh, front of the pattern of the actual project to lay things exactly where they're supposed to be. And when you're doing a, a, a wool applique, um, you don't have to do the exact same colors that are shown on the project. If you decide you want to have a different color for something, um, then go ahead and do it. It's, it's a lot of fun just to uh, make something your own. And this project is one of my uh, patterns from, it's called Delightful Seasons. The pattern is number 220. And it has a background uh, that you can uh, affix these little panels to, and there's one for each season. Of course, that's why it's called Delightful Seasons. So now, I already got the paper off of that one. that one and then finally I'm just going to place all the leaves where I'd like them then I got one here one here. And sometimes um, if you have stems meeting in some place and you don't like how you got your stems meeting, sometimes you could put a leaf there covering where your stems meet. There's all kinds of interesting tricks you can do. 
So I'm almost done placing. I've got three more leaves to place, and then I will show you the fusing. And the technique that I'm going to show you is uh, something that I uh, learned from a friend. Um, it's using a spray bottle and a towel and you get the project nice and the, the towel nice and wet and then it's basically a steam kind of like a steam bath so here we go the the main thing is make sure everything is where you want it to be and then you carefully very very carefully take the towel and you start here at the bottom and you just carefully place it over so you don't move anything underneath. And then I take my spray bottle and I soak the towel really well. And since it's a white towel, like I said before, there's no color transfer. when I think I've got it nice and soaked, then I get my iron, and of course my iron decided to get unheated because it's an automatic shut off, which is a good thing because I have forgotten to unplug my iron before. So we'll let this heat up. And once it is ready, and then we go like this. And you can kind of hear the little bit of the sizzle and you might see some steam rising and that's perfect. And you just kind of put it for about 10 seconds and you just carefully lift it up. You don't want to slide it. Go on to the next section. Carefully lift it up. Next section. Carefully lift. Next section. Next section. I'm getting to the bottom of the project. And you want to have some nice pressure. See the steam and make sure that it's nice and pressed hard. Now there's a trick that some home ec teacher um, that I did a class with talked about if you have a you can get a nice piece of board a little piece of wood and you can just place that on there and just press it down and that also holds the heat in and helps to fuse things even better now to make sure things are fused you're going to carefully peel back the towel and as you do you kind of check and see I'm, I'm pushing on these and they're not moving that means that section's been fused. That's all fused. There's That leaf's a little bit um, loose. So, and the star is just a tiny bit loose. So if you find some loose portions, then you just lay the towel back down on that section. Respray. And then just do another steam and when you have uh, appliques that have more than one layer like that you have this pot in the center circle and the star it might need a little bit more fusing and now as you can see everything is nice and fused I'm gonna pick it up see how nothing falls off so now you're ready to stitch and if while you're stitching a corner of a leaf comes up or a corner of the star comes up you keep your bottle of glue handy so you could just put a little dot under the section that's uh, coming up and so you won't lose any pieces that you uh, need to stitch so the next section the last the final section of our uh, wool applique series is going to be stitching it's going to include uh, show you how to do the blanket stitch the whip stitch 
and then we are going to I'm going to show you how to do inside corners and points so come back for that